The First Lady of Song, as she was affectionately known, Sibungile Kumalo, is being laid to rest. The legendary jazz and opera icon passed away last week from stroke-related complications at the age of 63. At the funeral service this morning, Sports, Arts and Culture Minister Natim Tetwa paid tribute to her. To the Mgoma and Kumalo families, our esteemed Executive Mayor of the City of Johannesburg, Councillor Jeff Makubo, creative workers of our country, representatives of the media, distinguished audience, the CEO of this place, Market Theatre, uh, Chiamo Mohadi Sibande, our legends with us here today, <coughs> I saw Mam Abigail, I saw Professor Oting Malo, the nation at large. It has become customary that when our hearts are intolerably broken, when a phenomenal figure passes, when a titan of the nation crosses the great valley towards the pantheon of gods, both as an expression of adulation and anguish for such a loss for all of us to say, <clears throat> a great tree has fallen. In the case of Dr. Sbongi Le Kumalo, a tree has not fallen because hers was a life lived with a single-minded dedication to ensure that more baobabs rise. It is because of her that our nation has long since begun to harvest from the rich forest of creativity, from the plantation of rhythm, dignity and pride that she so diligently cultivated and nurtured over her decades of service to this, our nation. I speak this morning not only as one of, not only as one on whose shoulders rests the responsibility for leading our country's arts and cultural heritage in the echelons of our government, but I stand here today as one who was privileged to call her Uda Dewe to my sister, and indeed a friend. So present, so present is she in our hearts that it feels unnatural, as Ayanda has said earlier on, and surreal to speak about her in the past tense the daughter of the soil whose memory we are here to celebrate was a gift of the purest gold. Hers was a sanctified voice, an instrument of the gods that will echo beyond the march of time. We are here to bid farewell to one whose ineffable talents ignited a generation with her voice, her sparkling spirit, and magnetic personality, she lit up the hearts of a continent and the diaspora, healed the vestiges of alleged inferiority by making us proud of our heritage as Africans. She leaves behind a crescendo of new and inspired voices to take our sides far beyond the pinnacles of the Kilimanjaro to the riches of what I want to call it, what I want to call today the Afrosphere, that state of perfection which only Africa can give to the world. And so today, we raise a pyramid to the skies because much as she was modest and humble by nature, 
a spirit as large as an exceptional as what Dr. Sbongile Kumalo embodied deserves serenity amongst royalty. The life before us today descends from the great line of queens. Indeed, she was a queen herself. And these queens in Africa's heritage, we know that as a child, she sat at the feet of Princess Makoko, the daughter of King Dinuzulu, of Tejwayo, and the mother of Prince Mangosutu Butelis. History records that Princess Magoko composed Zulu classical music and was gifted in playing ukupu, which is a stringed bow and kalabash musical instrument, in addition to being a celestial singer, Princess Magoko what also played is tondolo, a musical instrument, which is like a bow with a string bound to the middle. I hope the new generation is going to benefit from what one of our legend, that the Kaifa Siminya is building, a school where people will be taught about our own indigenous instruments, music instruments. And this one is one of the catalog of such instruments which will be taught. Small wonder when why, it, it should be a small wonder then, why Spongile Kumalo grew to become a legend in her own right. Amongst the many that we must thank Dr. Spongile's talents and musical prowess are her father, Professor Kabim Ngoma, himself a musical composer, a choir master, and a teacher who became a professor and head of the music department at the University of Zululand. With such a fountain of inspiration and tutelage, Spongile Kumalo was herself destined for greatness. She grew up in a home of consciousness, black identity, and the quest for liberation were her own outlook as a Pan-Africanist was nurtured by the great stalwarts of our country, such as Professor Eskiam Patlele and Ndade Zefum Tupeng, the Lion of Azania who ensured that throughout her life, Dr. Sbongile Kumalo would become a torchbearer and an instrument of service of our nation. Her name and her voice live in such annals of distinguished cultural monuments, such as YMCA and the DOCC in Soweto. The Tokay House, previously in downtown Johannesburg, the Funda Arts Center in Soweto, as well as FUVA, which has been mentioned before. Also previously, in downtown Johannesburg, across this place where we are, the Market Theater. These are training and cultural institutions where Sbongilo Kumalo not only performed, but also taught legends of young people in the craft of music, both as a singer and as a cello player. And such is life, the life we are met here to celebrate and to honor. Those who would have wanted to know and to meet the legendary figures of our history, the phenomenal women who shaped the heart of our continent can declare that through Sbongile Kumalo, they have encountered the likes of Queen Zinga, the Angolan matriarch, who fought against colonialism in the 16th century. Through Sbongile Kumalo, we can declare that we have shared a lifetime with Princess Mkabaiga Jama, the kingmaker, 
for three successive reigns in the 17th century. Through her, we have seen Queen Mojachi, the reign queen. And following her life, we have held hands with Queen Mantantis, the queen and regent of the Tlokwa people who rose like a baobab in defense of her people and heritage during the Mfetane and kept her people <coughs> secure and intact. It is through her that we know that queen known as of Abatembu. She passes in the year when our people pay tribute to Mama Charlotte MacLege, the religious leader and artist in her own right, social and political activist, who became the first black woman to acquire a university degree in South Africa after having graduated with a Bachelor of Science from the Wilberforce University, Ohio, in 1901. And so, Sbongile Kumalo's true legacy is a journey that can be traced across the sands of a distant time, which is how, through her music, through her rich, dynamic, and versatile voice, she was able to send us to the sacred depths of our being, leading us on quest for the rediscovery of our roots as the children of the soil. It is through this odyssey of rhythm, this lyrical trance and pilgrimage of the soul that our true purpose was revealed to us, that ours must be a continent destined for the crescendo across all spheres of human endeavor. The best way we can mourn and multiply this phenomenal daughter of the soil, therefore, is for us to make a pact to ride the winds of the Afrosphere. The pact we must make is that in whatever vocation we serve, we will strive to be the best, whether as teachers, as doctors, as, as nurses, as builders, as gardeners, as entrepreneurs, as mine workers, as call center agents, as engineers, or in whatever role we serve, let us strive to reach and honor the master and genius of Dr. Sbongile Kumalo's legacy. That was the essence of her life, the quest of her excellence, for her excellence, the rebirth of our continent, and the celebration of our dignity through our cultural heritage. Hers is a voice that will echo across time, healing the broken and inspiring the gifted. As one who is humbled to lead the government's work in the portfolio of her vocation, I'm grateful for the many instances when she would call or answer my call in order to share a perspective, to propose a pathway to share the gift of friendship, and indeed, to bask in the warm glory of her infinite wisdom. <coughs> Personally, <coughs> I will miss her calls, which will start like, no, just uh, two minutes or a few minutes, which end up uh, an hour or more uh, of, of discussion. And at this point, I, I'd want to thank the family for really doing what she wanted all of us to do. That we come, we celebrate her the way we celebrated her. She was able to write her own script and say what is it that she wants when she was still alive. I also want to, from the government point of view and generally the people of South Africa, to thank one South African who has shown her patriotism and love for his country and her people. That when my sister was not well, 
And when the kids reached out that she's not well, we looked to the corporate people. And one Dr. Stavros Nikolaou responded to the call. We thank you and the, the nation thanks you for that. I also want to thank uh, the person who worked with him to run around and interact with the family as we would have wished uh, to happen. Uh, my brother, Bungani Dembe, who was able to interact with the family. And we tried, but her maker had the last voice. As a nation, we thank Dr. Sbongile Kumalo for being the jewel on the crown of the heritage of this land. We thank her for placing our talents as a people across the global sphere. We thank her for her golden heart, for her magical voice, for her laughter, and for her dignity as a patriot. As we raise your pyramid to the skies today, we say to you, Subongile Kumalo, Lalangokolo, Lalangokolo, Mapalanguza, Nabanye Bipalange, Pencet, Lalangokolo, Mdungwa, Mziligazaga Mashoban, Siatogoza Koko, Ndawe.